Hello, my name is Ray Jones. I am with Farsoon Americas. I am part of the applications team. Uh, today I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about energy density, how to calculate it, why it's important, and how to apply it to your builds using a Farsoon machine. Why is energy density important? Well, depending on in use of the part, energy density can be altered to fit the desired application. Uh, say you're wanting rapid prototyping or proof of concept parts where the density or mechanical properties may not be a priority. Operators can widen the fill distance, increase layer thickness, and increase scan speed to achieve quicker build times. Conversely, if mechanical properties part resolution and accuracy or density are desired, operators can slow scan speed down and reduce layer thickness and fill distance. So what exactly is energy density? Well, energy density is a volumetric measurement of energy from the laser and relating parameters of the part bed during the sintering process. Energy density is a key factor in the SLS process and has a direct impact during the sintering process and the properties of built parts. It is an essential measurement in obtaining optimal mechanical properties, accuracy, and resolution for centered parts. So what exactly is the formula and what values do we use to get the solution? First, we have energy density, which is measured in joules per millimeter cubed. We have laser power, which is measured in watts. We have hatch or fill distance, which is measured in millimeters. We have layer thickness, which is also measured in millimeters. And lastly, we have scan speed, which is measured in millimeters per second. Now for the formula, we multiply scan speed times fill distance or hatch distance and layer thickness. We divide that by your laser wattage and we come up with your energy density. So for example, we have our FS PA3300, which is a PA1212 material that we are running in our small platform ST252. And we have our laser power set at 72 watts, our fill distance at 0.3 millimeters, our layer thickness at 0.12 millimeters, and our scan speed is set to 400 millimeters a second. When we divide our laser power by our layer thickness, fill distance, and scan speed, we come out with five joules per millimeter cubed. During the SLS process, material is brought to just below its melting point, while the laser uses just enough energy to fuse one layer to another. During the sintering process, there are a variety of visual indicators of insufficient or excessive energy density. The most common effect is curling. When the part bed temperature is too low, there will be not enough laser energy to effectively center the powder layer. When this happens, we need to increase part temperature or a laser power or a combination of both. The same can be said for when the part bed is too hot, or there is not excessive amount of laser energy, as the centered part will want to shrink from thermal stress, which will cause the edges of the part to curl inward. Other effects include warping of parts, melt pool, overly stiff or dense parts, baked on material, unattended round edges and corners, dull and underdefined text and features, and swelling of centered layers. Here we have some examples of insufficient energy density. In picture number one, we have a part that suffered from not enough laser power during the sintering process. Each layer was not able to fuse correctly from one to the next. Number two, we have a part made out of PA-12 uh, that has been warped uh, due to the part being thin and the scan speed being too high. Picture number three, we have a part also made out of PA-12 that suffers from a surface defect that we call orange peel, and this is due to laser power and part temperature being too low. Here we have some examples of excessive energy density. In picture number one, we see a melt pool, which is usually seen with dense parts combined with high laser power and part bed temperature. It occurs when heat energy stored within the completed part below the bed surface radiates upwards through the part. Number two, we see hot spots. and can be seen on completed parts that were affected by a melt pool during the sintering process. Number three, we see swelling and underdefined text that usually occurs with high laser power and high part bed temperature. And number four, we see hard baked on powder, which can occur on part surface when too much laser energy bleeds through its contour and swells. 
Now we'll take a look at the effects of parameters on in process and built parts. First, we have fill distance. Uh, with fill distance, the higher we increase this, uh, we can reduce build time during large builds because the layer centers less space and material, but will also result in lower tensile properties. If we lower fill distance, we can increase density, but increases thermal stress. Scan speed. High scan speeds can increase the chance of warping and other part deformities. Slow scan speeds can reduce surface roughness and increase part accuracy. Layer thickness. Increasing layer thickness can reduce thermal stress per layer and reduce part warp, but can negatively affect mechanical properties. Decreasing layer thickness can increase part resolution and density and mechanical properties, but also increase thermal stress. Laser power. Excessive laser power can lead to warping curling of parts. Excessive laser power can lead to poor surface quality as the material is over-centered. Inefficient laser power can lead to poor adhesion of each layer. And higher laser power can increase tensile and elongation properties, while lower power can decrease properties. Now we'll take a look at the effects of energy density on end process and build parts. First, we have tensile strength and modulus properties. Generally speaking, the higher the ED, the denser the part, and the higher the tensile properties. However, there is an upper limit, and excessive energy will cause a decrease in tensile properties. Next, we have elongation. As with tensile strength properties, elongation improves with an increase in energy density. To help offset anisotropy, increasing the energy density of vertically oriented parts can increase tensile properties. Elongation is mainly driven by the scan spacing and scan speed parameters. Filled materials will always have a greater anisotropic properties. Lastly, we have orientation. Due to anisotropy, vertically built parts relative to the build surface have relatively low tensile strength values with a large variation, very low elongation at break, and lower tensile modulus values. Large thin parts should be built at an angle to reduce thermal stress and avoid warping. This orientation may produce layer or step lines on the part. With Farsoon's open platform and parameters philosophy, users are able to create individual material parameter sets, including the parameters outlined in this video, and alter them freely pre-build or during the centering process. So now that we have our ED value for our PA3300, we're going to set up and run a build to make sure that we're getting the mechanical properties that we need. So the first thing we're going to do is set our parameters. First one is under build parameters, there's layer thickness. And we want to make sure that that's set to 0.12 millimeters. Then we're going to move to part parameters. We're going to set our fill laser power to 72 watts and our fill distance to 0 0.3. Now I set up a build that's about two and a half inches tall, filled with X, Y, and YX tensile bars. And I have them spread across the part bed at the corners, at the sides, and in the middle to make sure that we are getting a uniform mechanical property value throughout the whole build. Thank you and stay tuned for our next video where we discuss thermal control and build parameters on a Farsoon plastics machine.